Hello, today we're going to talk about inserting and formatting pictures in an Excel workbook. So there's two ways this goes. I'm going to start off by talking about pictures. All of this lives under the insert tab, which makes sense because we're inserting something in a book. So you've got pictures and you've got online pictures. Let's start with pictures because it's a little bit easier to explain. So if I click on pictures, the assumption is that I am looking at something on disk, right? Something I've saved. So maybe it's some data files or right, these happen to just be the pictures which are included with Windows. Right, pictures implies it is a file which is saved on my computer. And we'll show you the difference later. Notice I inserted this giant image. Also notice that I have a contextual pink tab up here, picture tools, right? That shows up when you've got a picture selected. If you don't have a picture selected, it goes away. So there's only one tab related to pictures, which is kind of easy. I'm going to work from right to left, just arbitrarily. I think the most important feature on the ribbon for dealing with pictures is the size group over here. The best way to resize something is just to, let's say something like, I want to make this image six inches wide, so I type in six, I press enter, and then the image just kind of snaps to whatever it needs to be. Notice that I specified a width of six inches, and that height just automatically happened. That's what you call constrained proportions. In other words, uh, for every bit that I size it horizontally, it's going to accordingly adjust itself vertically. Notice it's not skewed. That's the best way to resize an image, and that's how you should do it. If you have any choice at all, you should just use the size group. Now, you can also grab a corner, and only a corner. And so corners keep the, the proportions constrained as well. Notice the image is not getting warped. But it's really hard to be specific. Like, it's hard to get it five inches wide like that, so I just don't recommend it. Now let me show you what bad resizing looks like. That's not the same thing, right? I mean, so that's what happens if you grab something that's not a corner. Right? You're warping the image. It's not good. I can't think of a reason. Well, I mean, unless you're just trying to wreck the image, uh, that's not what you're going to want to do. So remember these tools here. More often than not, you're just asked to set a width of 5, and the height is what it is. So on the, similarly, in that group of size, you got this crop button here. Might as well show you that. Click crop. You get these big black, uh, they're kind of like uh, sizing handles. Um, so you pull them down, or what you're really deciding here is you're going to be removing pieces of the image. So I do this. And so if I press the crop button again, all this gray area is going to go away permanently. So that's kind of, I didn't really resize anything. I just made it more square, right? So that's cropping. Now you've seen that. The arrange group, I don't really have anything to say about that. It kind of does what it says. The most notable thing in there is rotate, probably. Picture styles is a big group. So these are just pre-applied styles that you can do to images. Some of them are pretty interesting. They all have names. That's all I want to point out here. Like this one is called Thick Matte Black, right? And this one is called Drop Shadow Rectangle. So if you're ever asked to apply one of those styles, unfortunately, you probably just have to mouse over them. They are a lot like the styles that you see on the Home tab right here, right? I mean, they just kind of have these arbitrary names and you just apply them. Now, I also would like to point out the tools that you have available to you over here, like Picture Effect. So this is where you do all the shadow, reflection, glow, all those kind of tools live over here. Right, I could point at each one of these and we could talk about what each one of them does, but then this video would take two hours. I just want you to point, you, you should just know where these tools live, just in case you're ever asked to apply them. Now, I think this is probably kind of an important group, not in that I have a really compelling reason you're ever going to use it, but uh, these are common things that you're asked to do on certification exams, in my experience. So like under, like under artistic effects, you got all these kind of things, which are kind of cool, but I can't tell you why they're a good or a bad idea, right? They just, they are, they just are what they are. They have names, right? Here's color adjustments. You can kind of see them changing the, the uh, tints and corrections, right? Again, kind of tints, brightness uh, related things. As you can imagine, I can't tell you why you're going to need these things. And in my opinion, if you're editing your photos in Excel, you're probably using the wrong program. But uh, I'd like to point out that they exist because, as I mentioned, they're pretty common certification exam questions. I'll show, the, show you the last thing, which is remove background. Remove background is a strange little tool. See this purple area? Well, the, the idea here is that you're going to move that purple area around. And I'm trying to isolate that that antelope or I'm not sure what this 
creature is, but I'm trying to get him. No, I'm getting better, right? It's it's this kind of guessing game. I'm, I wouldn't waste too much time with it, because it's pretty much a pain. At some point, you make a decision. It's going to throw out all the pink stuff and keep everything that's not pink. When I click Keep Changes, wow, I just made a huge mess. And sometimes that's how Remove Background goes. Remove Background was something that got introduced in 2010, so if you're using an earlier version of Office, you can look all day long and you're not going to find it. Is this worse? I'd say so. But I do want to emphasize that idea that just know that these are here. And these things over here, these colors and artistic effects, these are the kind of things that change from version to version of Office. So if you're using 2010, most of this stuff is here, but these things might have different names. I'm going to throw this image away and talk about the last piece of this, which is online pictures. Online pictures is kind of a replacement for what used to be called clip art. So if you're looking for clip art, you're not really going to find what you're looking for. This is just an improved tool. Clip art was this weird thing where you search some curated Microsoft library for images. Now, they just hook you up with the Bing search. So Bing is Microsoft's search engine. And I get right these results. And so these are Creative Commons. These are the ones that would be, in theory, okay to use if you want to search the entire web, which, depending on what you want to do, so we're talking about copyright issues here, then you would click that. I like that picture. I insert it. And so, right, this just came from somewhere on the web. And in theory, I have possibly I at least have some rights to use it. So notice I've got picture tools. So regardless of whether I insert a picture or clip art slash online images, I have the same tools available to me. The difference between these two buttons is just where the picture comes from. So that's pretty much everything I can tell you about images in a nutshell. Thanks for watching.